long voyage from England and our three months here. I have tried to prepare myself in every way for the task of ministering to the people of India. But in truth, nothing could have prepared me for the horror I have witnessed today. A young woman burnt alive on the funeral pyre of her husband. Please, God, give me the key that will unlock the fear and superstition that drives them to this terrible act and to share with them the love and freedom that is in Christ. Oh, Mama. I think that wave was for me. John, what are you doing here? <laughs> Visiting an old friend. <laughs> it's good to see you. How are you? Perhaps a little humbler than last we met. Let me have a look, Krishna. Uh, 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 uh. Can you move your arm? No, sir. Uh, uh, uh. You've dislocated your shoulder. And to put it back will be very painful. Do you understand? Yes, yes, sir. Oh. Hold him tightly. This won't be easy. <laughs> oh. 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 Now, that will be painful for a while, but it will get better. Thank you, Sahib. God will bless you for your goodness. He'll bless us both. Not for our goodness, but because he loves us and because his son died for us. I've heard that before. But isn't the death of God's son a shameful thing? God's love for you, Krishna, proves you're very precious to him. Now, go home and rest. I want to see you in a couple of days' time. Will you come and see me at the mission? Yes, sir. Krishna, can you read? Yes, sir, I can. Then take this. It's the book of Matthew, sir. And it tells how Jesus was hurt and killed and won a mighty victory over death so that we can all live forever with him. Thank you, Sahib. I will read it to my family. Jishu jakhun chitkar kore nije natta ke shamorpan kore chilen. Takhun shatopoti ebong jara tar shonge Jishu ke pahara dit chilo. Tara bhumi kompo ebong or jaja jaa ghot chilo dekhe vishon bhoye pe bollo. Shotti, ini ishwar ir putro. তিনি যদি ঈশ্বরের পুত্রই হন তাহলে নিজেকে ওদের হাতে নিহত হতে দিলেন কেন এখানে লেখা আছে ঈশ্বর তাকে মৃতগণের মধ্যে থেকে ওঠালেন যাতে তিনি কে তার প্রমাণ পাওয়া যায় আরো লেখা আছে যারা অনুতাপ করে তার আত্মা তাদের অন্তরে বাস করে আমি কখনো শুনিনি যে যারা অনুতাপ করে তাদের অন্তরে বিষ্ণু বা শিবের আত্মা বিরাজ করে তার মানে কি আমাদের প্রত্যেকেরই ক্ষমার প্রয়োজন it's God who's opened your eyes and has forgiven you. Yes, Sahib. Krishna, it's good you're here. I must leave tomorrow, but my prayers will be with you. Thank you, Dr. Sahib. Now, will you share our fellowship meal? Yes, I should like that. You know what this might mean. They will say I have broken caste. We are all equal in God's eyes. And we recognize no barriers of caste or race here. So let's eat our meal and rejoice. Thank you.
responsible for this. This man is Firingi. He's a traitor. So what is his crime? He has eaten with the European missionaries and has broken caste. This man is under the protection of the Danish crown, as is everyone here. How can he be a traitor by having a meal with my friends? Sahib, this is our way. Nobody can be a Christian and eat with foreigners without being cast out I and... forbid you to harm this man or his family. Anyone who does will answer to me. Now home, all of you. Krishna Pal, on the confession of your faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, and at your own request, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> <laughs> Krishna, you know there is nothing sacred in this water, only in the miracle that has made you clean. Yes, Sahib, and I will pray that my wife and my family will also be baptized. And God will answer your prayers, but you must trust him. Yes, Sahib. Ishwar, Mongol Ishwar, Amade Shabai Mongol Guru. Come. Welcome to our fold. I'm so happy for you. Thank you very much. The chain of caste is broken, my friend. Welcome. Yes, sir. Yes. Welcome. God bless you. Bhagavan, Tomar Bhalagurun Krishna. Don't know what. Don't know what. God bless you. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. I'm very happy. Thank you. He shot Tomar Mongol Kurun. He shot Tomar Mongol Kurun. Bye, Rav. It's good you're here. Yes, Sahib. I think I want to know more about your Jesus God. Well, then he's already at work in your heart. Seven years, and at last, the New Testament in Bengali. Years of planting and waiting for the shoots to grow. And look, Indian brethren baptized and others soon to follow. The Bengali scripture, the schools, the work among the poor and the sick. God is at work, and through his grace, the harvest has begun. <laughs> Congratulations, Sahib. Thank you, I'm so glad you came. I have a news for you, which I have kept specially for your wedding day. What's that? I'm wanting to be baptized, Sahib. I've given my life to Christ and must now take this step. <laughs> oh, bye, Rav. Bless you. <laughs> I couldn't have had a better wedding present. Thank you. <laughs> the college, which was founded three years ago with 37 students, is holding its first graduation ceremony in the grand new buildings at Serampore. It will be open to all. No caste, color or country shall bar anyone from admission to this college. And I pray that the blessings of God may be mightily upon it. William! William! <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> oh, William, your dream has come true. Not quite, my dear. But here's the man who may help it to. Professor Kerry, Mrs. Kerry, I congratulate you on your achievement. Professor, I'm most impressed. Oh, thank you. But I take little credit. The house you see here, God has built. I thought it was a Bengali builders. <laughs> well, certainly they played their part. It's so strange, Professor, that takes someone from so far away to spark our renaissance. We are in your debt. You're very kind. But you know the breakthrough I'm waiting for. A little patience, Dr. Kerry. I'm sure we will succeed. Please, God. Hello, 
নিজের ভাইদের সঙ্গে বিশ্বাস খাতকতা করছিস না আমি কোনো বিশ্বাস খাতকতা করিনি নেচ্চদের ভগবানকে তুই ঈশ্বর বলে পূজা করিস না তুমি আমাদের সকলের ভগবান একমাত্র ঈশ্বর খ্রিস্টানদের সঙ্গে এক পাতে খাওয়া দাওয়া করলে তো যা যাবে না তারা আমাদের ভাই ভাই নিজের ভাইয়ের সঙ্গে বিশ্বাস খাতকতা করছিস তুই তুই আমাদের কলঙ্ক না আমি সত্যকারের ভগবানের খোঁজ পেয়েছি বেইমার I got some terrible news. Why Rev's been murdered? Oh no, no. No. What about Asher and the children? Where are they? The children are with Krishna and Rasu. No one knows about Asher. See, Bhairav's parents have taken his body to the village to prevent there being a Christian burial. And no one knows where Asher is. We've looked everywhere. No one knows. Or no one's sane. You must pray she's not being held against her will to be sati. Oh, please, God, no. No. His funeral was secret. They probably fear that if there was sati, the mission would suspend its good works. And if not, their traditions are weakened. So no one's saying a thing. Even Krishna can't find out. We have a martyred brother and we're powerless to comfort his wife. Even if she's alive. You have influence. But not power. Would anyone raise an eyebrow if Wellesley marched into this tiny Danish settlement in response to my interference? Women are dying needlessly. Thousands of them. It's murder. I know the figures. You drum them into me often enough. People killed in religious pilgrimages and babies thrown into the river. But this is not our country. Oh, so we're not meant to care. Care? You think I don't care? The East India Company is right. You can't come to India with its centuries of civilization and tell them that they're wrong and that we know best. If I banned Satya and a riot spread out of Serampur, Wellesley would roast me alive. Does that mean we do nothing? No, it does not! Spurred on by fear of the tragic death of Asher, we took our cause to the highest authority in the land to fight against this wicked practice of sati. Ram Mohan Roy did much to persuade not just his own people, but took our cause to Parliament itself. At Serampore, we used every means available to bring this evil to the attention of those who had the power to stop it. And then, one Sunday, as I was preparing for the morning service. William, I should go ahead with these. All right, I just need to change a few things here. For you, Dr. Carey, from the Governor General. Oh. Thank you, Krishna. Joshua. Joshua! What is it? He's done it. After all these years, he's done it. Who's done what? The Governor General. He's abolished Sati. Look, he wants me to translate it and send out copies immediately. Oh, no. oh thank God. We must tell everyone. No, you tell them. If I delay, who knows how many more women may die. Well, Joshua, will you preach for me? I certainly will. imagine what our service was like. We shed tears of joy. You should have been there. There's nothing I would rather have been doing than translating the governor's letter. Just think of the lives it will save. Dr. Carey! Asha! Oh, thank God. Thank God. I had to wait until it was safe. Well, you're safe now. You're amongst friends. So will the press, the college, the abolition of Sati. You've achieved your three aims. Who said I had only three? 
Now it so happens. He believed that one day mighty harvest for his efforts would be reaped. Let us now witness whether this great man's prayer and work bore fruit. Hundreds of thousands each year are finding hope for a better life through Jesus Christ. Places which had hardly 10-15 churches uh, now have thousands of house churches. And in my network over the last five years where we started the house church training and the church planting, it has grown from zero to 3,200 house churches with a community strength of 32,000 believers. This exploding interest in Christianity can be traced back to the vision and obedience of one Christian businessman. Over 200 years ago, a simple small town English shoemaker named William Carey was moved by the stories of the horrific heathen practices in South Asia. He responded to a vision and a call from God to bring them the saving message of Jesus Christ. Compelled by his missionary calling to this distant land, William Carey dedicated his life to establish his mission works just outside of Calcutta on the banks of the Hooghly River in the small Danish settlement called Serampore. William Carey was a pioneer used by God to stimulate the beginning of God's dramatic modern day work in India. Expect great things from God. Attempt great things for God. Carey practiced this motto. He believed that Indians should be taught to read the Bible so they could become Christians. He translated portions of the Bible into 40 different Indian languages and dialects. He did uh, Bible translation in, in such a big way that uh, by the turn of the century, he doubled the number of translations of the Bible all over the world. He believed that Christians needed to be educated to be leaders in all spheres of society. To accomplish that goal, he established the first university of any kind in India, called Sirampur College. Centuries ago, with a hostile government, treacherous conditions, little support, and a daunting task ahead, William Carey forged into the future against all odds because he knew he was following God's call. This pioneer missionary left for his eternal home on June 9, 1834 and on his sickbed he made the famous statement to his fellow minister Alexander Duff when I'm gone say nothing about Dr. Carey speak about Dr. Carey's God So how did caring for anybody that was in any need function in India when you have basic inequality? So what would happen to someone in need in India? Well, that's where the practical conflict between the gospel and the Hindu culture got going. The, the iconic case is the widow burning. Mm -hmm. That Here is a young woman, and that was one of my most important public fights in India. In 1987, an 18-year-old widow in Rajasthan in Sikar had uh, committed sati, was forced to burn herself on her husband's funeral pyre. And I went there and investigated it and wrote the story which was published in uh, the Indian Express's front page story, The Revival of Widow Burning. And we got, uh, the media was supporting me, so the, finally the government supported that program. The interesting thing was, while we were able to mobilize 400 intellectuals, intelligentsia, feminists here in Delhi to oppose widow burning, um, 
the Hindus in Rajasthan were able to mobilize 200,000 people demanding that the ban on sati, ban on widow burning should be abolished. So there wasn't the culture of care and compassion because where you don't affirm the intrinsic dignity of every individual, It was William Carey and his group, particularly Hannah Marshman, she was the one who began building the primary schools education around Sirampur. And then a lot of missionaries came and educational movement began in India. And when they first began educating, particularly girls, and including girls from lower castes, uh, they the upper caste people here mocked the missionaries. They said, well, you might as well try and educate cows and buffaloes, uh, trying to educate girls. This was our attitude. That's what Jesus is saying. In order to bless all the nations, you must teach them all that I have taught you. Education is a ministry of the church. That's what it means to disciple nations. Knowing truth sets people free. And this is a ministry of the church and that came to India because in India on religious grounds, knowledge was denied to our people. It was denied to all the women and it was denied to all the lower castes. But on religious grounds, for religious reasons, the gospel brought education to India. People have always loved to learn. It's just part of the human condition. We want to know, we want to discover. So that's always been a part of us. But the idea that everybody ought to be educated, again, that's an idea that emerged from someplace. In the ancient world, formal education was basically um, restricted to um, male children of wealthy families. Some exceptions, but that was kind of the general rule. And then there's this little community and they remembered that they followed a guy who the last thing he said was go and teach everybody and make disciples. And Jesus himself would teach um, rich and poor, male and female, slave and free. And so they began to do that. And then over time, the power of Jesus' words and his teachings and the idea of making them available to all people created communities that prized universal learning. And eventually, when you get to Martin Luther, and the idea that the Bible ought to be unleashed for everybody to read, that's what created this great passion for universal literacy. There was nobody in the ancient world saying, we gotta teach everybody how to read and write. Um, that really was uh, an outflow of the Jesus movement.